Greetings, warriors. I wanted to come to you on this Friday afternoon and bring you some Friday facts and share them with you. I was on my weekly Washington, D.C. coalition phone call this afternoon and uh, learned some very interesting things I want to uh, tell you about. So the first thing is there is a platform, sound the alarms all over the place. There is a platform called Omegle. Have you heard of it? O-M-E-G-L-E. Apparently, Omegle is causing a lot of havoc with kids. They promote themselves as your friends are boring. Talk to strangers. Strangers, can you imagine this warriors? So let me give you a little background. Uh, there was a current lawsuit of an 11 year old girl who went on Omegle. And she initially had a good experience. She was talking to what she thought were peers. Now, it does say, because I did my research, that you have to be 18 plus to be on Omegle or 13 plus with parental supervision, parental approval. But we know warriors with a lot of these platforms, actually most of them, check off a box and they allow you on. There's no true age verification. That is something we are working on behind the scenes in Washington to promote and get done with Congress that these platforms must have age verification. Okay, leave that for a minute. Omegle, this 11-year-old girl, then is on another session, uh, fairly, you know, a couple of minutes later, the screen is all black. She doesn't see anybody, but she starts receiving messages. We know where you live. Now, whether I wasn't privy actually, um, to what transpired in that previous session, but she may have revealed where she lives and more uh, you know, inf personal information that they now collected, the predators, and used against this 11-year-old child. And they said, if you don't take, we know where you live, we'll come after you and your parents. Um, if you don't take your clothes off and take a picture, and she complied. Now, warriors, we must step in, we must intervene. Why are our children so willing to take off their clothes for complete strangers? We've got to talk to them about it. We cannot be embarrassed. This is happening all over, happening every you know, um, town, city, countryside, rural area in America. I do not exaggerate. I share this information with you because I want to keep just pounding it into you that, um, this is happening and escalating. Luckily, I don't even want to use the word luckily, but she did go to her parents after she did this, okay? And they quickly contacted law enforcement and took it uh, from there. And quickly, it proceeded into a lawsuit. Now, what I want to share with you is that this lawsuit was just shot down because like most district courts, with all of this big tech and our children and what is called CSAM, child sexual abuse material, they are saying that, well, section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, they act as a billboard. They are not responsible for what's going on on the platform. So you see, warriors, this is the issue that we're fighting so hard for. And uh, there are several cases with children right now pending, but also cases recently that have been shot down. Um, so uh, again, appeals are being done. We need one, and this was part of the meeting today, we need one of these cases to go to the Supreme Court. And I hear that Clarence, uh, Justice Th Clarence Thomas is behind getting very involved and wants to get one of these cases to the Supreme Court to have big tech clarification, because right now we don't have any kind of big tech clarification. There is no protection for the kids, for all people, but kids especially. So Omegle, O-M-E-G-L-E, talk to your kids, talk to your grandkids, see if they're on this platform. It is an open platform. And I understand the basis of the uh, this one lawsuit was that it creates, it promotes the ideas of adults interacting with children. Now, come on, warriors, you know where that's leading. I don't have to tell you. Keep the kids off it. Talk to the kids. Check out their devices. Remember, you're paying for them. You have every right to see what's going on there. Warriors, I also want to remind you, April 1st, 
I don't really have any April Fools for you. I guess uh, what's going on with our children could be considered some sort of April Fools because I cannot believe that there are not more protections for our children. April begins uh, Awareness Month for Autism and April begins Child Abuse Awareness Month. Now, I don't like these months, but you know what? Let's talk about them because every month needs to be you know, Child Abuse Awareness Month. Every month needs to be Autism Awareness Month. And I bring up autism because I want to share some shocking facts that there is such an intersection between human trafficking and um, uh, children or youth with any kind of intellectual disabilities, and that includes autism. They are uh, at the rate of three times higher to be groomed, to be sex trafficked, because they are vulnerable. Remember, all kids are vulnerable, but any kind of children with disabilities are even more vulnerable. And the numbers are shocking uh, with this community. And I don't hear a lot of chatter. I don't hear talk. People should be in the streets screaming. You know how I feel, warriors. Uh, the fact that you're here, uh, you're warriors right alongside me. And uh, before I go on, I do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a lot of um, new warriors that have joined lately, and I want to continue building a platform for us uh, to share. I will be uh, doing some live programs also where we can have a chat and interact with each other. And I wanna remind everybody, I would love to have comments on these videos. Um, I started out a few months back with comments and they, it started out beautifully with supportive comments and things like that. And then once the, the uh, I don't know what to call them because I'm not going to use that word, T-R-O-L-L-S, uh, started coming after me big time and started harassing me and started, uh, you know, posting nasty things. Warriors, I'd love to have comments. I'd like to have more interaction. I'm not giving them my platform to shoot off those mouths and those nasty comments. Um, but I do want to say stick with me because I will be doing more of a live programming and we'll have a chat with that. So stick with me, please. But thank you for joining. Um, we need all of these issues discussed. We need them out in the open and we need you to share. Remember, if you share a tweet, a Facebook, a posting, you've done your job. Um, take it a step further. I want to announce that, um, well, before I do that, I want to get back on this uh, children with disabilities, intellectual disabilities, Nobody's talking about it, but I am. I want to do more work on that because also today there was a, a video released. Now, I've been talking about this uh, since December 7th when a report came out from Dr. Vivek H. Murthy, a Surgeon General, U.S. Surgeon General, who put out a very rare 53-page advisory about our youth and their mental state. Now, we know leading up to COVID with all of these issues going on, you know, and the normalization of the sexualization of children and the internet and all the turmoil in the last few years, uh, the kids were very vulnerable to all kinds of mental health issues. So now just today, which is April 1st, uh, there's an advisory put out referring back to this December 7th advisory. Now, I talked about it extensively. Uh, I didn't hear anything in the media much about it. Our youth are suffering. If we as adults are suffering and overwhelmed, can you imagine the kids? And the whole crux of this report is that um, it has increased during COVID approximately. And remember, these figures are off a little bit because we don't really know, but things have escalated upwards to um, you know 60%. And we have children talking about as young as five years old suicide. Now, when questioned, these five-year-olds, and uh, they go to school and they say, I want to kill myself, and the teacher says, what, what does that mean? Well, I, I, I want to end it. Okay, well, what else? I want to harm myself. Five years old, we have reports. So, so many kids are talking about suicide. The Warriors always says, have an action plan in place. We pray and we hope to God you never have to use it, but you must have things at your fingertips in the event something occurs. Or even if you just want to educate yourself and learn more about the issue, 
why not brush up on it? So go to suicide uh, lifeline prevention, uh, org. I hope I'm giving you the right website. Um, but it's the suicide prevention lifeline org. Yes, that's correct. And have that phone number handy, have that website handy, look up those facts, read about it, just know about it. Um, share it with your teens if you're so inclined, just so if they're feeling down, know the indicators. Most parents whose, whose children um, do commit suicide have said to me, they seemed fine. They didn't, I didn't see anything different. That's most of the kids. Now we're having openly in the last month, I'm hearing more about openly traumatized children not coming out of their bedrooms, uh, not interacting, not eating, all kinds of stuff going on, warriors. So we've got to protect our youth. We've got to communicate better. It's not happening in the schools. It's not as far as, for the most part, I will say, we know they're not educating them about these issues. I don't think so. I'm not hearing about it. I mean, I'm here in New York City. I don't know where you are, but you know, write to me if you want to share any kind of information about any of this, lynn at lynnswarriors.org. Uh, because remember, knowledge truly is power. And I want to know things, uh, what's going on around our country. And so school's all in turmoil. Messaging is all in turmoil. They have to learn it from us. They have to learn it at home in our community, in our bonding together uh, of facts and truths, okay? Because no matter what you read, I actually don't believe most things I read unless I wrote it myself because I know how the business works. Um, really vet your information. Really, please, I can't tell you what to do, but don't stick to a lot of, you're not going to hear any of this, you know, regular mainstream cable or television. They just don't cover it. They really don't cover it. So there's a couple of things we want to cover. We want to bring additional attention to this month for any kind of youth with disabilities. Learn more, go on lenswarriors.org. Um, I have to load some new information. I'm going to try to do it tonight, definitely by tomorrow morning about these studies. I have a few things on my Facebook and Twitter, Lens Warriors, to read up on. And just take notice of things because it can be as simple as uh, I know a young woman, uh, 18, and considered a legal adult, uh, but she was actually groomed for sex trafficking because a guy told her she was pretty. A lot of girls fall for that anyway, but she really fell, and I'll just leave it at that, and was sex trafficked immediately, like it happened within a day. So we have so much swirling around us. We want to be aware of what's happening with our children. I am very worried when these reports are not being uh, you know, reported to the public for the most part, the media is not sharing. I'm not reading them in periodicals. I catch things from foreign press, uh, usually reporting on America. And how crazy is that, warriors? I've got to go to foreign resources to read reports about the United States. So we've got that. We've got the whole child abuse issue we all need to be a warrior here. If you see something, you need to call 911. We've got to get law enforcement involved. Remember law enforcement, they are our partners, okay? We have to learn how to deal effectively with law enforcement. We need them. Um, so much is going on. And some other Friday facts that I want you to be aware of very exciting event coming up here in New York City on Thursday, May 12th. I will be speaking at the annual LifeWay Network event towards a new life. Now, let me tell you, Warriors, why I'm so excited about this. And I would love as many of you to get involved with this. LifeWay Network is a partner of the Warriors. LifeWay Network, boots on the ground, two safe houses here in New York. Their model is success for how to lift people out of sex trafficking and become strong survivor leaders. A lot of them come back to help women, to share their stories, to lift them out. Because the Warriors is about what's happening, where we can go forward, what are the solutions, what are the resources, not this constantly talking about how bad sex trafficking is, how bad this is, how bad that is. We know this. 
We all know this. Everything's being fueled by the internet. And we've got to just focus on resources and solutions. And I am proud to be speaking at this event. And you will find all the information. Um, I just tweeted out Lynn's Warriors. I'll add it to the website as well. You can buy a ticket and attend if you're in the New York area. That is terrific. If you are a business, please, I urge all of you, we are looking for business partnerships. We are looking for donations. We have levels such as $50 to sponsor a survivor. When I sit here and tell you, this organization, Lifeway Network, takes no government money. It's all privately funded. This is what the Warriors is part of, wants to work on. Share this model, create this model, not only in New York State, but around our country, and work towards that to truly helping people. Because all this other noise I'm hearing, I'm not helping anybody. Very little trickling down to survivors. We're going to change that. And I need all of you. I cannot do this alone. So some other Friday facts for you. We still have and need help with two different policy issues that you can add your name to. First, on the federal level, the Earn It Act, eliminating abusive rampant neglect of interactive technologies. And yes, warriors, I know that is a mouthful, but it will hold big tech responsible for harms caused to children. This is groundbreaking legislation, three years almost in the making we've been working on. It is now in the House. It is a bipartisan bill, and it is a we're waiting. We're waiting because the House, from what I hear, it passed unanimously a couple of months ago, and now it's on the House floor, that was in the Senate, for full authorization to go into law. Now, why I need all of you, so we're waiting for that, when this will be introduced, when uh, we can get votes on this, but what I need from you is we still need co-sponsors. We currently have, as of today, 24 uh, Democrats and Republicans uh, co-sponsoring this. It is introduced by Senator Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut and uh, Senator Lindsey Graham. And so we still wanna add uh, new people. I'm in New York, I'm still working very hard. Do you know what, Warriors? I don't have one New York elected official that will talk to me about this, including Republicans, this is shocking, nobody, um, and who will sign on to co-sponsor. We want to keep kids safe online. Who wouldn't want to sign on for that? I can't figure it out, but I'm still after people here in New York. So I'll be working the next few weeks diligently. I'm going to find one. I'm going to find somebody who's going to work with me on this in DC. And all they have to do is add their name. But in the meantime, you, wherever you are, can go to house.gov, senate.gov, find out who represents you, write to them and say, please support, earn it. E-A-R-N-I-T, Earn It Act in D.C. If you're really bold and want to help, you can call their office because they keep logs, they keep numbers and say, support Earn It Act. I am your constituent. You work for me. Well, maybe don't say that part, but think that part. They do work for us. And they will take your name down, add you to the list because every name and number helps. And we need more action out of people, not complaints. We know it's bad. We need everybody to take action. So we've got Earn It Act. That's on the federal level. Now, if you're in New York State, only New York State, but this is important for everybody to know, we have the Sex Trade Survivors Justice and Equality Act. Now, that's another one that's a mouthful. What that breaks down to is the equality model. We in New York are facing legalizing pimps, brothels, brothel owners, illicit uh, spa owners and sex buyers, any third party who causes harm. We are going to legalize that. That's the talk around town. So we want the equality model. We can all agree. We want to decriminalize those prostitutes, give them exit strategies out of this life and resources should they want, because we know from studies, warriors, upwards of 97% 
have been trafficked, forced fraud, coercion into this lifestyle. Trafficked. They're not doing it of their free will. Remember, this is not Pretty Woman, the movie. All right. This is a horrible, awful, disgusting. You get the drift. So what we need you to do is go to our coalition website, New Yorkers for the Equality Model. And that website is equalitymodelnewyork.org. Join our movement. Add your name. We're collecting signatures. Uh, remember, numbers count. We need to fight this very well-financed campaign to fully decriminalize the sex trade because there's so much noise about that. And there's so much uh, um, of this well-financed campaign PR push, either online, in the media, that we've got to be more vocal. We've got to get out there. We've got to fight this because you don't want your little girl or boy growing up to be a sex worker. This I do know. So again, that website is equalitymodelnewyork.org. Read about it. And warriors, even if you're not in New York, this is percolating all over our country. It's going to come. They're using New York, and I've mentioned this before, as uh, kind of this role model, they call it, to see what happens here so they can then push it in their state. So you're going to want to know what the equality model is, what this bill New York has uh you know, pending uh, in the legislation, waiting. And um, I will have one of the sponsors, Senator Liz Kruger, will be on my radio program on April 13th. Um, but you can hear more about that. That's a couple of weeks away. But read the bill overview. Read more about the equality model. Remember, warriors, I wouldn't sit here and promote anything if it wasn't the real deal or wouldn't help children, families, and all of us in society and our communities because it is atrocious, and you know this, what's going on. And this is out of this world, what is going on. You couldn't write this stuff. This is not a Hollywood script. And remember, I come from the entertainment business. That was my entire career. And what is happening now is just out of control, and we're not going to accept it, are we? So you've got that homework, uh, equalitymodelnewyork.org to do. You've also got the Earn It Act. And I would suggest Lynn's Warriors, if you go on the website, lynnswarriors.org, go to the um, news and events. There's a resource button. You can read our statement of support and how you can also um, take more actions. But really, if you go to house.gov, senate.gov, you will find out who represents you. Come on, let's make them work, right? Let's try to make them work and tell them, I support earn it. You need to support earn it. Two sentences. That's it. Add your name, hit the send button. And also one other little thing I want to remind you of, dirtydozenlist.com. And that is the annual campaign to hold 12 entities, corporate entities responsible for prioritizing profit over human dignity, really over our children. So if you go to dirtydozenlist.com, the 2022 list came out on March 9th you will see these 12 entities, including Twitter, Reddit, OnlyFans. You'll see the little 12 boxes. You can read all about why we are holding them accountable. And you hit, you add your name and you hit the send button. All the work is done for you. I, remember, again, I'm urging this because numbers count. And we can't, we've got to hit them in the purse. We've got to figure out, um, you know, how to make more noise. We've got to figure out all of this. I'm very clear on my vision and I'm angry and you should get angry too, but appropriately because our main goal warriors right now is protecting our children, knowing what's going on all around them, talking to them, working with them and getting them to open up to us and for us not to be embarrassed, for us not to scream and yell, would you know what to do if you found a nude image of your child? Uh, say your child got up and went into the bathroom and you see the phone and all of a sudden a nude image pops up. Do you know what to do? Well, you should have an action plan in place. Because when I tell you that we know 40% of kids 9 to 17 are sharing nude images with strangers. Now, remember, the number's higher because we don't have exact figures, but 40%, so it's probably 50%. 
we know the media is pushing at this normalization uh, of, of all of these issues. We know the schools are. We know we even have Disney World. Who would have, you know, I've always had my thoughts about Disney World, but who would have thought all of this stuff? So we need to come together. Community creates change. Please go to lynnswarriors.org. Please go to my Twitter and Facebook. Please consider a donation. All of the money goes into the warrior workshops that I'm developing. I have a few announcements of actually going to places um, and doing these events. Remember, COVID held me up. I couldn't get out there into the communities, but now I am. May 12th is going to be wonderful. Remember, lifewaynetwork.org really does the terrific boots on the ground. And this past Wednesday, I had Marion Kendall, executive director of Lifeway Network, join me in studio live for the whole hour. Whoops, dog barking, if you heard that, uh, a neighbor. And um, we just sat and chatted. And Marion shared, you know, vision, mission, healing, uh, just, just two women talking. And that's what's need it, not this constant forcing, you know, how horrible and awful and disgusting, and because we know that already, right, warriors? So now we want solutions. We want resources and as many free resources available, okay, not to burden the already burdened Americans. So please uh, look for that interview. It is on Twitter and Facebook, Lynn's Warriors. Again, I'm going to stress, I've got the uh, Lynn's Warriors Cafe Press.com shop with all kinds of goodies, t-shirts, mugs, key change, and other usual stuff that if you buy supports, all the money goes to support survivors for their needs. Because the only way we can make a dent in all of this is the education that I'm providing to you, helping you with, so your child or you don't fall victim to this predation. So that's intervening. And then it is our duty We are Americans to take care of our brothers and sisters and to help those, those vulnerable people that I've heard people say, for the most part, a lot of them are throwaway people who cares. What an attitude. When do we get so hard like that? And if that means a couple of dollars to give them a meal, a couple of dollars to help them get their medication, it's up to all of us. So I want to leave you with thanking, thanking, thanking. You're all terrific for listening to this, for subscribing, for joining me. We want to create warriors all over the United States. And I want all of you to know from the bottom of my heart how much this means to me because we can make change, but it starts in our own homes and communities. So what do I tell you every day? Go out and be a warrior.